Hello, welcome again uh, to a new video on adjacency matrix of uh, a given graph. In this video, we are going to uh, see some important properties of uh, the adjacency, uh, adjacency matrix of the graph. First, we have an example of the adjacency matrix. So we know that the adjacency matrix of a, uh, matrix of a graph can be defined as follows and for a graph G uh, on uh, which contains the vertices x1, x2, etc. to x and the adjacency matrix G denoted by AG is uh, an n by n matrix whose ijth entries uh, correspond to the number of edges from uh, v uh, number of edges from uh, the vertex Vx2 uh, uh, from x1 to xj so the number of vertices from uh, sorry number of edges from which corresponds to the number of edges from x x r x x i to x j x i to x j that is the i j entry. So for the graph given here, mm, we have the uh, yeah we have that uh, a, a very nice uh, a description of the matrix. Uh, uh, a picture is given here uh, uh, that contains uh, uh, the labeled. Uh, uh, the labeled uh, rows and the uh, labeled columns see here the first row uh, is uh, is labeled as uh, the vertex a second row vertex b etc since uh, a b uh, c d e uh, are the vertices in the graph there are five vertices and uh, uh, and and corresponding to these vertices we uh, label uh, the rows uh, and uh, also we label the columns in the matrix and uh, you can uh, decide the entries uh, in the uh, or the elements in the uh, rows and columns in the in, in the rows and columns using uh, the uh, the presence of edges uh, between uh, the pairs of vertices here uh, by choosing the vertex uh, a uh, two times uh, from a to a there is no loop so uh, you can enter zero and uh, from A to B, uh, you can see there is a uh, there is an edge present, and this is the edge present there. So you can uh, you can uh, you can select their one. You can use their one. And uh, continuing, uh, yeah, continuing uh, continuously taking the other vertices by fixing a particular vertex. Uh, see uh, here, uh, the first vertex uh, A is fixed, and then uh, by considering. Uh, all the remaining vertices, the, that vertex itself you can consider then uh, and the remaining vertices one by one uh, you can find whether uh, uh, that vertex, uh, the vertex un uh, which, uh, which are under consideration is uh, um, whether it is, whether the vertex is, uh, is adjacent to the fixed vertex uh, or not and uh, whether they are adjacent and uh, if, if they are adjacent uh, how many edges are present that can also be uh, decided and uh, that number the number of edges present can be uh, entered can be used in the uh, rows one by one and uh, then finally we can uh, uh, we can we can uh, prepare that matrix that way we can pr prepare the matrix and this is the matrix obtained using this uh, um, Okay, this is the matrix obtained using uh, using that procedure. Okay. Now another uh, another example, uh, but in the uh, okay. Yeah, another example is given here, uh, and another graph, a, a different graph is given here, uh, and in that that uh, graph has the property that uh, it is not a connected graph. See, and this graph. Uh, uh, contains two components, and this is the this is the, this is a part of the graph which is connected, and this is another part of uh, the same graph which is uh, which is connected. So this is a component, and it's another component. Uh, that graph contains uh, two components, so it's a disconnected graph, and uh, you can prepare the adjacency matrix of that graph. Uh, then. Uh, uh, you know, uh, we can, uh, yeah. You know uh, the way to uh, there, there there exists there is a way to check whether uh, the graph is uh, connected or uh, not using that adjacency matrix we have discussed that and for that you know in this case uh, since there are um, there are six vertices in this graph uh, 
Oh, there are, since there are six vertices, you have to find a new matrix B. Uh, that matrix is equal to A plus A square plus A cube plus A raise to uh, 4 plus A raise to 5. Uh, up to the fifth power of uh, A, you have to can take and then you have to find the fifth power of A and then you have to and then you have to make uh, a new uh, matrix by adding all these powers, uh, uh, these continued powers, and then. Uh, then you can uh, you can uh, cons you can take uh, each and every uh, entry the off diagonal entries in that uh, a new matrix if all the entries are not uh, equal to zero then that matrix is connected uh, if somewhere uh, the, uh, the the element zero or the number zero is present then the graph is disconnected but you know in this case in the case of uh, this graph it is not uh, uh, actually necessary to uh, apply this method to test whether the graph is uh, disconnected because connected or disconnected because uh, they are directly uh, the picture itself the picture uh, uh, itself uh, is very simple and uh, that can uh, give us a very uh, direct uh, information uh, whether the graph is uh, connected or disconnected then coming to another example the third example and this graph uh, it's a disconnect uh, sorry it's a directed graph uh, this graph has the property that uh, all edges are uh, given uh, some direction uh, in uh, the adjacency matrix of this graph will be uh, a, a non symmetric uh, graph it is not a symmetric graph but that will be, that will be a square mat uh, a square matrix uh, that graph will be the matrix of the graph will not be symmetric that you can verify it's because uh, the direct due to the presence of the direction uh, you know the edge the edge ab will not be treated as equal to ba uh, in the graph uh, ab will not be equal to ba so he, uh, we have to uh, enter one uh, only in the ab in the ab cell in the in the ab a comma b cell in the matrix uh, we can enter one but uh, in the b a cell you have to enter zero so you cannot uh, take that value the opposite uh, uh, pair uh, cannot be taken equal to uh, one due to that uh, the matrix uh, is a non-symmetrical matrix now we have to uh, see we can see uh, some properties of uh, uh, the adjacency matrix that is the important uh, part of this discussion we have uh, those properties uh, stated as propositions uh, the proposition one uh, if the adjacency matrix uh, AG uh, is not uh, of a diagraph, the adjacency matrix AG is not of a diagraph, that means uh, uh, an ordinary graph, then AG is symmetric. Then the graph AG is symmetric. The symmetric uh, means uh, symmetric around the main diagonal, and that is uh, uh, AG equal to uh, A transpose. Uh, in other words, A of G equal to A transpose of G or A equal to A transpose. Uh, that is the adjacency matrix of uh, G is the same as the adjacency matrix of uh, 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 of G transposed. Adjacency matrix of uh, G transposed. Alternately, uh, one can say that AIJ, in other words, AIJ, the entries, with using the entries also you can say that uh, if AIJ is the IJ entry, then AIJ equal to AJI in that matrix. Okay, then the second property, the proposition 2, uh, if the adjacency matrix AG of a graph G has uh, no loops, if the graph, uh, if, 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 the, uh, if the graph has no loops, if the adjacency matrix A G of a graph has no, uh, if the graph G has no loops, then all the entries, then we can think about the entries in that adjacency matrix. Then all the entries on the um, on the main diagonal of uh, A G are uh, are zeros. You know, then all the entries in the main diagonal, all the main diagonal entries are equal to zero. So somebody ask you that uh, in the adjacency matrix, based on the adjacency matrix, uh, suppose somebody ask you that. 
uh, all the main uh, in the all the entries in the main diagonal are zero in a uh, in an adjacent symmetric then what you can uh, interpret about that uh, uh, that gap or or or, 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 the, or we what you can say about the um, about the given uh, graph that has the uh, given matrix as its an adjacent symmetric uh, then you can say give the answer that uh, the graph does not contain any loop so that is the meaning of uh, that proposition. Next proposition three: um, If A G is the n by n adjacency matrix of a graph G, the, that is not uh, uh, a digraph. Uh, that is not a digraph. That is suppose G is not a digraph, and we consider the adjacency matrix, uh, the n by n adjacency matrix of the graph. Then, uh, then the vertices are such that. Uh, uh, xi, xj and xi or xi and xj an element of vg uh, and, and also on the graph and suppose that uh, uh, xi and xj are the two vertices uh, in uh, the graph then uh, then summation uh, where k varies from 1 to n of uh, uh, a kj equal to summation where k uh, varies from where k varies from 1 to n of a kj a k j equal to a 1 j plus a 2 j plus a 3 j see a 1 j plus a 2 j plus a 3 j plus etc plus a n j yeah, what is this uh, quantity this is the quantity uh, by fixing uh, the second uh, subscript you know and the second subscript uh, is fixed that means uh, the column is uh, fixed you are choosing uh, the jth column as, as the fixed column so you are uh, here taking uh, after fixing the jth column you are considering all entries in that uh, column and then you are finding uh, the sum that means the column sum this is the column sum and that will be equal to uh, the degree of uh, the uh, vertex uh, uh, xj uh, this quantity will be equal to the degree of the vertex uh, vertex xj that is the sum of the elements uh, in column j you can you can see uh, column j is equal to the degree of uh, uh, of the vertex uh, xj similarly similarly uh, or additionally we can say that uh, summation we are uh, if you are fixing uh, after fixing the ith row suppose we consider the same quantity in a or the similar quantity that is sigma summation from k equal to 1 to n of uh, a n of a i k summation of k equal to 1 of a i k equal to a i 1 plus a i 2 plus etc plus a i n yeah will also be equal to degree of x i degree of x i where uh, where i here it is uh, here what is fixed here the i uh, row is fixed after fixing the i row then we uh, we find the sum then we get uh, we we get the degree of uh, the vertex x i now okay then uh, the proposition uh, proposition 4 uh, we have in proposition for we have uh, in the case of uh, suppose uh, the adjacency matrix of uh, uh, of the graph G is given adjacency matrix uh, n by n matrix adjacency matrix of the graph G is given and uh, and xi and xj are vertices uh, such that um, uh, such that a summation from uh, uh, such that summation from k equal to 1 to n of uh, uh, a k j equal to uh, uh, but you know uh, this discussion uh, is about uh, the diagraph you know, the variation but the sim similar thing we are considering here uh, that we have uh, discussed in the proposition 3 but in this case one difference is that uh, instead of uh, the uh, ordinary graph we are considering uh, diagraph and we take the diagraph uh, when we take the diagraph then and, and we find if, if we find the sum of the entries in the uh, in the jth column in the jth column you know you are going to get uh, the degree minus of uh, x uh, x j that means the sum of the uh, sum of the elements of uh, jth column is equal to the is equal to the in degree of the vertices uh, of the vertices x j in degree is the in degree is the uh, on, uh, is the total number of edges that are coming uh, into a particular vertex or coming and joining uh, coming to join the vertex x uh, x j uh, in the graph so that is the total number of edges but th that this happens only in the case of uh, directed uh, graphs so this is the number of uh, edges uh, uh, coming to join the vertex uh, uh, x j uh, when we uh, 
uh, find the similar uh, quantity in the by by fixing uh, the ith row suppose by fixing the ith row if you are finding x uh, i1 plus x i2 plus etc plus x i n then we get that uh, mm, then we get the quantity we get the quantity that is equal to the sum of the, uh, the that is the sum of the entries uh, in the ith row and that quantity is equal to uh, the out degree of the out degree of the vertex xi out degree of the vertex xi is the total number of edges that is going out from the vertex uh, uh, xi and the total number of edges that is going out from the vertex xi and finally uh, we have the uh, proposition another uh, property that discusses another property of uh, the adjacency matrix if the adjacency matrix a g of a graph g does not uh, contain uh, multiple edges suppose uh, the graph uh, does not contain the of the uh, the graph here is an ordinary graph a simple graph uh, if it does not contain mul multiple edges then uh, uh, then you know uh, a i j equal to zero then we have a, a, a the quantity a i j uh, will be either equal to zero or equal to one then a i j will be equal to zero or one if the uh, if the adjacent symmetrics uh, a i j of a graph contains uh, uh, contains multiple if the graph contains multiple edges then then you know uh, the uh, when some of the uh, uh, entries uh, some of the off diagonal entries will be greater than one so if the graph uh, you know if the adjacent symmetrics of the graph contains uh, some number which is greater than one uh, other than zero or one which is greater than one then that graph uh, uh, must definitely contain uh, some multiple edges but if these entries um, uh, uh, must be uh, of diagonal entries okay then this we have uh, discussed some uh, important properties of adjacency matrix and all that uh, help us to uh, say some uh, some important uh, nature of uh, uh, the important characters characteristics or uh, nature of uh, uh, the graph um, yeah using the by or by analyzing the adjacency matrix of a uh, of a given graph Okay, thank you for listening.